Hello everyone, I'm Marina and it's a grammar school. There are many causes of gel liftings. In this video, I suggest we deal with the liftings in the cuticle zone. So let's get into it. Here are today's nails. They seem to have lasted perfectly. But if we take a closer look, we will see air pockets in the cuticle zone here. If it was only on one nail, then we would just call it an accident. But these pockets are on all of the nails here. So it was a 99% nail technician's mistake. Here's how to remove such liftings. Using a thin carbide drill bit, follow the lower borderline of the lifting until it cracks and falls off naturally. Since if we go over the liftings, there is a high chance that they will continue spreading and messing up with the drill bit. Nail plate prepping mistakes. For example, there are previous gel coating leftovers. You will see them right away. Since their color will be different from the main one, it will be whitish. A polishing mistake, leaving glossy areas on the nail surface or using soft buffers that smooth out the nail scales instead of lifting them up, or low-quality ones. They do not make it to the tense nail. They start polishing the nail plate, which in turn causes liftings. Before polishing, make sure to push the cuticle with an orange stick to get under it with a buffer. Grab a clean buffer, place it at a 45-degree angle, and thoroughly polish the cuticle zone. This way you will remove some of the pterygium, so you will have to work less with an e-file. If your buffer is too soft and you doubt whether it can lift up the nail scales well, then use a 180-240 grit file for natural nails instead. Make long moves from left to right, lifting up the nail scales. Don't use harder files, for example a 100 grit one, since it will thin down the nail plate, which can also result in liftings. The next mistake is not clean enough manicure, when there is some pterygium or a cuticle left spreading onto the nail plate. Gel polish will not last and there will be liftings. To avoid them, we need to ace the manicure technique first. Another cause is using an old and bald diamond drill bit. After multiple disinfections and sterilizations, its abrasive gets taken off and the drill bit gets dull. So, its average lifespan is 5 to 10 manicures, depending on its quality. Besides, not only can dull drill bits cause liftings, but they may also overfile the nail plate. Nail techs start pushing harder on them, which results in overfiling. So, change your drill bit on time. If you feel that your drill bit works less effectively, since it got clogged with the skin, you can clean it up using a buffer. Just stab it like this at the highest speed and the drill bit gets clean again. The fourth cause of gel polish liftings is using a remover, the one for softening and removing the cuticle. As a rule, they are alkaline, so we need to neutralize them by sending our clients to wash their hands or clean them up with sanitizing products. Once we're done with the manicure, we need to neutralize all the remover leftovers with water. So, send the client to wash their hands or use such a spraying bottle to cleanse them. You can also use a wet tissue and thoroughly clean up the remover. To polish the cuticle, we use silicone carbide drill bits, such green ones with a softer abrasive. We would just polish the surface like this, making it glossy. 
which causes lifting along the kneel perimeter. The fifth cause is all the dust left under the cuticle or in the side sinuses. Once you're done with filing, brush off all the dust first and only then degrease the nail plate. Otherwise, there will be no proper bonding between the nail and the coating and it will peel off. Make sure to dehydrate the nails thoroughly. One move with the tissue is not enough. A lot depends on the dehydrator. If it contains lots of moisturizing components, it may result in gel polish peeling off. One of the most common mistakes made by nail techs is applying the tissue and pulling the dust down like this. The dust is still left in the cuticle zone, so there will be no proper bonding and the coating will peel off. Before dehydrating the nail plate, make sure to brush off the dust until there is none of it left. Now fold the tissue and move in from the center to the side sinuses, clean up all the dust. If there is still some dust left, here is a life hack. Wrap a tissue around an orange stick and clean up the cuticle zone. You can also use a micro brush here or a flat brush. Cause number 7 is skipping adhesive products. Since filing the nail plate may not be enough in some cases, as you know, so we will need to use some extra bonding products. A dehydrator for sweating nails, a primer, an acidic one for sweating and complex nails, and an acid-free one for normal nails. Don't apply too much primer, though, since it can also cause liftings. Don't forget to wait for its access to evaporate from the nail plate. If a client's nails are wet, then we need to use a dehydrating product. The primer acts like a double-sided tape, lifting up the nail scales and improving the bonding. Apply a small amount with a squeezed-out brush one brush will do for a few nails. Using too much primer is a mistake as well. If we layer it, then the next coating will peel off for sure. Let it dry a bit to make sure that it acts the way we need. Now we can proceed with the base coat. Another crucial and one of the most common mistakes is using a wrong base coat. It happens since we're all different, our nails are different, so manicure products are not universal. So I recommend you have multiple base coats in store. Different in consistency, plasticity, and acidity. To find the one, test it out. When nothing holds on the nails, all of the base coats peel off, then try using some harder materials. Gels, acrogels, acrylics, or file out the natural nails on the inside. My model's nails bend slightly, but overall they are normal. So in this case, we can use harder base coats. If the nails curl badly, then we can use a clean base coat as an underlay and align the nails with a hard one. The next mistake is less evident, which does not make it less common. When we leave a huge gap in the cuticle zone, a 1.5 to 2 mm one, then we apply the color closer to the cuticle, so it gets on the natural nail plate. And since there is no bonding between them, the color peels off eventually. And the last, but definitely not the least, cause from our list is gel polish pooling. It's another story. I've got a couple of videos on it on my channel, 
But the main point here is, when you see a pool, in no way sand the nail secure. Make sure to clean it up first. Lean on with the pinky finger while painting the nails to secure your brush and hand positions. If the color still pools, clean it up with an orange stick. And if the pool is so big that it doesn't work, remove the coating completely and start anew. Make sure to lift up the cuticle even more to paint well under it. Squeeze the brush well on the neck of the bottle and cover up the nail with a thin layer. Take a tiny step back from the cuticle to avoid pulling. You may use an original brush or a thin one if you wish. Make sure to check out my video on how to remove gel pooling, try out the tips, and I wish you all success in your work. Bye bye! And a thumbs up? If you like, found your mistakes. If you like this video and found your mistakes, give it a thumbs up. I wish you all success in your work. Bye bye!